Hello everyone, welcome to the Government Information Service. My name is Leslie Ann Johnson and today we have a very informative session for you. I have with me to my immediate left, Mr. Wesley McKee. He is studying in China. He's actually the first Grenadian who was quarantined and he's here with us today. So of course we'll talk about his experience. And to his left is Dr. Francis Martin, the Acting Chief Medical Officer. As I mentioned, it's a very informative session and we seek to get a lot, a lot out of this just so that people can understand. Even though he was quarantined, he's okay because we want everybody to understand that there are certain procedures that must be followed, but people must not be shunned because of course, as you can see, he's well and alive here with us today. Ah, it's good to have you both. Thank you. Great. So I'll start with you, Ms. Marcus. So as I mentioned, you the first person who was brought to you studying in China. So tell us a bit about yourself, what you're doing, how long you're there for, so we can understand exactly who you are. Okay, well, um, I'm originally from Karakou and uh, I went to China to study civil engineering. Uh, I've been there so far for three years and uh, the lifestyle is a bit hard to get accustomed to, but uh, it's okay now. <laughs> um, but other than that, it's all good. Uh -huh. Good, good. So how long are you going to be studying for? Um, You've been there for three years. The study period is supposed to be five years. Five years. Uh, how is it going for you? I mean, I know you mentioned it's kind of, you know, different to Grenada, but the, the whole cultural aspect and all of that. Oh, the cultural aspect, um, at first it kind of hits you hard, mm. but... Once you relax and choose your own path, mm -hmm. uh, you'll get accustomed to it easily. I think the weather is the part that would get to most people from our area. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when I just started out, uh, I think the language barrier was the main difference. Mm -hmm. And then when I just started doing my major studies, uh, noticing that even though I studied the language for one year, yeah. it was still not enough. So that that's something that most people should think about. Right. Um, be very diligent with the language. You'll need it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Dr. Martin, when did you first meet this young man here? I, I had the pleasure of meeting uh, Mr. Maki on the day, <clears throat> on the night he returned from China. Uh, that was my first experience with him. And immediately seeing him and interacting with him, um, he is... Uh, kind of character, the way he carried himself, uh, he seemed like a very responsible young man. He was not flustered at all in any mm -hmm. way at all. Um, he was really easy to work with, really easy to understand what was going on. And at, obviously, to be honest, I think Wesley made my job much easier <laughs> than the public made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the public can be quite critical, and I expect that to happen because mm -hmm. that's what we're there for. I like to, I usually use public impression to measure myself yeah, and of to course. look at myself in the mirror. So I was really grateful for that yeah. opportunity. But like I say, Wesley being the kind of guy he is, I had absolutely no problems with him yeah. at all, and I wish every patient would be like him. Great, great. Yeah, well, I mean, the public, they would have their fears and concerns, which we understand. So, of course, we have to try to allay their fears. You want to add something there? Uh, in that regard, um, I think some people, uh, they're blowing things a bit out of proportion with too little of understanding in regard to how the situation really is. Um, they're not understanding how to deal with the people who may have been in contact mm -hmm. with someone who has this virus. And um, the way that they treat people because of it is is becoming critical and it's making things bad for themselves uh, not particularly for the person who may or may not be infected and in most cases it is most likely not to be infected because just in order to get back to Grenada I have been through so much checks so many screens I I feel like a lab rat. <laughs> <laughs> but it so, was for your own good, right? Of course, of course. Um, and I understand uh, the difficulty of having to deal with someone who may or may not have been in contact with a deadly virus. Uh -huh. um, and I understand where everyone is coming from, yeah. where when people know that I've come from China, the area where this whole thing originated, they take steps back away from me. And I'm not offended. <laughs> But I just feel like maybe the person should relax a little bit because they're scaring themselves. Um, I understand why they would step back, but 
at the same time, they should relax a little and try to understand the situation better mm -hmm. before assuming too much. Right. It's good to be safe, but not scared. Don't panic. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I know some people would still panic. So yeah. what? What were your when you first first heard about this? Mm. What were your, your 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 thoughts, your feelings, um, your concerns in the initial stages? What sort of conversations were you having with your peers and then when you made contact with your family back home what what was that like at that particular time when we just started hearing about the coronavirus okay so for me personally with mm -hmm. the people that i was staying with in china uh my apartment mates the first and main concern that i think all of us had was food <laughs> really <laughs> yeah because I'm a big eater, so <laughs> I was really concerned because all of the shops started closing down, the streets became empty, so I was like, where am I going to get my food from? Um, but So this is the first thing that... Yeah, that's the first thing. That, I'm, I'm serious. That's the first thing that ran through my mind. Um, but after that, other concerns started rising when um, the amount of infected, the, amount, mm -hmm. the death toll started rising, the suspected infected, um, and... People only started coming up with cures afterwards. Well, cures. Yeah. Um, and it started to dawn upon us that this is actually something that's really serious. Yeah. Um, so some of the people I was staying with, they started getting scared. You know, it's that thing where you're trying to speak to them about it. Just calm down, let's think about it. Try to understand it before freaking out. Yeah. Um, and then when I spoke to my family, they were already freaking out. <laughs> Because, yeah, you know, the like zombie apop so. apocalypse over there, I, I don't want you to get bitten by a zombie and turn into one. So. <laughs> wow, wow. So, <laughs> well, this is interesting. So then you decided, of course, to come back. Yeah. You thought that might be the best thing to do. So what was the process you now going through that? Because at first you, you were being told that you should stay put, stay yeah. calm and all that. But you decided to come back. So what, what, I mean, what was going through your head at that time that made you decide, okay, yeah, this might be the best thing to do at this point still, just to take a chance. I might be passing through people on the airport, millions of people. But I think I want to take this chance because I want to come back home. Okay, my initial thoughts about that was if I stay in my apartment and just relax there, I'll never know whether or not I'm infected. And the chances of me getting infected will only increase because I'm staying in the area where more people are becoming infected day by day. Every day was a 20% increase until it became a 30% increase. And in my head, things are only getting worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And because I know that in every intersection, every, as a matter of fact, just to leave our apartment, mm -hmm. we had to be checked. To the point where in China, uh, for people who are diagnosed and they know they're infected, they've been locking them in their apartments. They're not yeah. allowed to leave. Okay. So, I wanted to know whether or not I was infected as well, and also to help my family to relax, to help myself to relax, because even though I'm trying to take it with a grain of salt, um, I still want to calm down. <laughs> so, I think this was the best decision, um, because it helps everybody to understand that there's nothing to fear, because policies have been put in place in different countries to make sure that once you're traveling through, you have to be safe. Right. And if you are infected, there's almost certainly no way that you could get through. Uh -huh. Any signs that you are, as a matter of fact, in Hong Kong, they would arrest anyone that was coming from mainland China, and they didn't say that they were. Uh -huh. Just for not announcing that you came from the mainland, they would put you in prison. So you went through all the stringent procedures before you got here? Of course. And then when you got here? And then when I got here? I, I, I went straight into quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> because, of course, that's a safe thing to do. Of course. Right. Of course. Dr. Martin, do you think that now at this stage, people are understanding the importance of the quarantine measures? Do you think people have calmed down? Because in the beginning, we, we were seeing a lot of stuff on, on, on social media. People were, you know, well, of course, understandably upset and concerned and all that. But no, do you think they're at a stage where some of the work that you're doing, it is paying off now? I can definitely say that the work that we're doing is paying off well um, because I'm hearing on the ground, I visit different places and you get the mood of people mm -hmm. and I am really happy to say that now I'm, we're in a good place, we're not in the best place yet because there's still some work to be done. 
Uh, but I believe people on the whole understand the need for quarantine and I think they're comfortable with the idea of having, of having the quarantine. Um, and uh, more importantly, as we have been sharing a lot of the information out there, the correct information, uh, our PRO at the ministry and uh, all the team at the ministry, what we're doing, I am getting sometimes direct comments from people that things are okay and we're getting to the point where we really want to be. So I, I, I think that the plan is actually working. Right. So you, of course, in close um, working relationship right now with the, uh, the um, Grenada Airports Authority and all, all that, all the relevant players. What are some of the measures, again, although you belong to the Ministry of Health, but that are in place at the airport just to ensure once people come in that, you know, if there's, you know, a suspected case, they're separated from everybody else and the person there is not let out into the population immediately. Right. So, it, it, indeed, we are in very close collaboration with the airport's authority because we really cannot do this without the ports and the cooperation of the ports. Mm -hmm. Our plans at the airport starts long before the, the, the traveler arrive in Grenada. We be, once we become aware that someone is traveling through the mechanism that we have, the advanced passenger list, we identify risky persons even from them. So in Wesley's case, we knew that he was coming. We know where he was sitting in the aircraft. We know which aircraft he was coming with. So you start planning for that. As soon as the aircraft lands, our port health officer would go onto the aircraft and get the aircraft declaration of health, which would list the passengers and list the conditions that they're in. And once the port health officer is satisfied that the plane, the uh, passengers are well enough, they are disembarked. Um, and a decision would be made whether to disembark uh, or travel of interest, as we call them. Right. Um, either first or last, depending on where they're sitting. Mm -hmm. When they come off the plane, they get to go through a different line and not the line of the normal passengers. We put them, there's a different place that we put them um, so that the nurse can, can, uh, can triage them and the nurse can check their temperatures to make sure that it doesn't have a, a, a fever. Um, so even their um, immigration, their, the immigration uh, process is, happens differently as well. The immigration officer, their, their, their passport is being, it would be, would be dealt with differently, their luggage is dealt, dealt with differently. Um, and after that, that triage area and after the temperature is taken, then they're taken to isolation, which is on the airport itself. Mm -hmm. And they will stay in isolation there until we arrange for their quarantine location and then we take them to the quarantine location. That is how the process goes for some of, of interest that we may be exposed. For the rest of the, pop for the, rest of the travelers, they go through the normal um, immigration. There, we have two cameras that are installed that checks their temperatures. Mm -hmm. Um, and the camera has a monitor inside of the nursing station which actually looks at each person as they're coming through. It measures the temperature and once there is someone with a high temperature, the system flags that person and an alarm goes off. Yeah. So we know we can, <laughs> they were like a catch one. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, and of course the nurse will go get that person and of course um, get them into triage and also into quarantine if needs be. I am quite happy to say so far we have not been able to identify anyone from the regular passenger list that have been have had a fever. People have been doing well. Right. The four persons that we have in quarantine are persons that we have identified even before they landed here, and as they landed, we took them into quarantine. Right. So coming back to you, what was the process like when you got here and then you were placed in quarantine? Was that when you were told, okay, you'll have to be quarantined? Was it something you were like, oh my, do I have to go through this, or you realize that? This is for my own good and for the good of the nation, just to ensure, because you did say before you left China, you wanted to ensure yeah. that you were not infected. So did you think that this was a good thing for you? And what was the whole treatment like everything while you were in quarantine? <laughs> Actually, uh, before I left China, one of my main thoughts was, I hope that Grenada is already on board. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was uh, one of my main thoughts, uh, hoping that I was looking forward, actually, to be in quarantine because it's something that I expected to happen. Um, it, in my head, it's something that was necessary um, in order to make sure that I am not a threat to the society mm -hmm. where I come from. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't want to be the person that brings the plague up in here. So, uh, <laughs> uh, that was already on my mind from the beginning. Um, and through the process, um, as I am 
as my the people who know that uh, I was the first one have been calling me patient zero. Um, <laughs> I was kind of the person who was used to start the process. So um, it was a little bit of here and there, but uh, we got to a uh, comfortable understanding pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of happy with the results. So. <laughs> right. So, but do you... Uh able to be in contact with family members yeah, or, I mean yeah. WhatsApp um, phone whatever is the case you just would not have been able to see them face to face because of course that's the purpose of quarantine like um, another part of the reason why I was so eager to come back was because I haven't visited since I left so I've been away for three years I'm basically a foreigner right now yeah really <laughs> yeah everyone says that you become white you know because of the cold Okay. You, you don't know our money is plastic now and i'm just like okay you need to <laughs> yeah <laughs> get so, up to speed yeah <laughs> um so it, it was good to be able to keep into contact with everyone uh, my family members and friends mm -hmm. um when i got back um like i was treated very well uh, yeah. even though i was in quarantine so you're satisfied that all procedures were carried out just to ensure again once you're released it is because you're safe yeah, to go I'm out so what would you say to people, because we know a lot of things are, you know, being said on, on, on social media. What would you say to people now that you've had this experience, yeah. if you were to write something on social media to help people to understand mm. the benefits of the quarantine process and the reason why you were happy that Greenada was on board as you were hoping before you got here, what are some of the key points, at least two, key, two or three key points that you would make to them so that they would understand, okay, what I'm saying here, or my opinion is not necessarily true mm. so maybe i should listen to you okay um quarantine is definitely necessary um there's no question about it there's nowhere to build up to that it's just a point to be made it is definitely necessary even though the person may not be infected um they come from a place where there's the possibility so quarantine is definitely a necessity so that has to happen uh for safety purposes it's it's a procedure that is necessary i'm gonna put that out there use that word again necessary <laughs> all right that's the first point point. and the second point when it comes to the way to deal with this my best advice don't freak out <laughs> don't freak out just calm down out. think about the situation like do your research if you're so scared of something then you should know about it you shouldn't let something scare you without looking into it to understand why you're scared in the first place so you should understand the situation before losing your mind or treating someone like an exile because if you see or meet anyone mm -hmm. whom has been to china in grenada they have definitely already gone through quarantine to ensure yeah. that they're safe so you shouldn't be backing away from them because the time period has already gone the tests have been made they've been checked to ensure that you and they themselves are safe mm -hmm. dr martin what is the state of mind right now of the other we have three others in quarantine right now yeah. yeah so what what is the level of interaction what is the state of mind and i'm sure of course the process is similar to yes <clears throat> i i'm glad you asked about the state of mind because uh, at one of our meetings this week knowing that wisley was about to be um, released from quarantine mm -hmm. um, some of the staff members were really concerned about his state of mind psychologically ah. how he was feeling oh, he will, um, and I said I said thanks for telling me that because I don't think I thought about that early the state okay. of mind I'm just thinking of in okay Health. my responsibility is just to keep the country yes. safe but I was able to tell them you know from interacting with Wesley I I said to him that guy is just the coolest guy ever this thing is not bothering him so for him I don't think he's gonna need psychological support but they still say but you should still have a psychologist on board and I took that advice because it is actually true yeah. that some people may need to have that psychological support I'm try it. Willing to try it? <laughs> so um, so my interaction um, with them and, and their kind of state of mind the others are just the same the people are understanding, they know what needs to be done. I am in contact with them every day. 
and just like this day, I think we were blessed that the people that have returned are of the state of mind where they expect this, they understand what is going on and it's not affecting them psychologically. But still, I took the advice that we need to have a psychologist on board just in case something like that happens. So, I'm, I mean, they have really made my job easy. easy for me. Great. So, what are you planning to, how long are you planning to stay here for? Because, I mean, we know this coronavirus is still in the air. And are you in contact with your friends back home? Um, back in China, what are they? What, what are they saying? Yes, your second home. But what are they saying? I mean, of course, they must be concerned. Uh, actually, I've been. How to put it? I don't think I will be going back. Actually, you don't want to go back. It's not exactly a want, but um, it's it's what can be done, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not uprooted from a very well-off family so uh, it, it's a bit of a difficult situation to deal with mm -hmm. um, so there's the upside and the downside of the situation obviously um, and I left another life behind when I left there uh, because I have been there for three years I basically made a new life um, made friends that were like brothers and sisters to me um, and I was living with people that I trust with my life so you know it's it's a bit of a hard situation to to grasp for me as well um but in the end i feel like it was the best decision um and even though it's a bit difficult to deal with i'm comfortable with the idea that i chose what okay. i did okay so dr martin um recently you were post cabinet press briefing and yourself and the honorable minister were spelling out some of the recommendations and suggestions from CAFA. so of course we're just ensuring that we follow all these rules to make sure that grenada as much as is humanly possible keeps the coronavirus out of its borders the airport seaport where have you yes we are in constant collaboration with CAFA and paho who are our leading public health agencies for us here and the recommendations that we put in place are recommendations that are standard for our region. So for example, the recommendation is that at the ports of entry, there is absolutely no need right now to wear PPEs or personal protective equipment. And that once someone doesn't have any symptoms, wearing the mask and using a glove is sufficient. Um, using alcohol-based hand sanitizer, making sure that the alcohol content in it is more than 75% alcohol. And in, I have seen some of the hand sanitizers here that doesn't have, it's about 62%. And we encourage people to add some spirits with it mm -hmm. and, or add some rum or something like that with it. Just, <laughs> just wash it and rest the heart. <laughs> 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 yeah, the alcohol is going to work. Um, so those are the recommendations. We now are able to test for the virus um, in, in, in CARFA. So for the OECS, for example, we're going to be testing yep. in, in CARFA. We have the nasopharyngeal swabs that we use to test. So we're going to, our response would be standardized and be based on the threats that we have. Although the coronavirus, the alert and the danger is very high in China and some other part of the world, after CARFA looks at everything, they have graded our risk as low. They have still graded our risk as low because the virus is not circulating in the region yet. The last two cases that we have actually was, the last two cases in the region, Jamaica and St. Lucia, both um, turned out to be negative. So we're still doing very well and we're following the recommendations of our lead public health agencies. Right, so he's here with us, he's good, thank God. And we have about three other people in quarantine and we hope that they're okay. But in the event, that somebody should come back in the future and this person tests positive. How are we going to deal with that situation? We deal with it based on the information that we have. If we have prior information that that person tests positive, then the processes would change at the port of entry. Yeah. Um, the way we take them off the plane, um, what we do with them, we're going to take them in a different line, as we said, manage their luggage, manage their immigration purposes, triage them, put them in isolation at the airport itself. And then we will not put them into quarantine. That person will be transferred to the isolation unit at the general hospital. And there they will be treated. At that treatment site, the healthcare providers will wear full PPEs, right. just like you see in China and other places. And we do have those PPEs on island. Um, and uh, of course, the symptoms will be managed until they're well enough um, 
to go home. And that's really how we're going to do with it. It's maybe an opportunity also to indicate something that people normally don't think about in new viruses. When new, vi new viruses like this occur, the public health standard is to deal with it differently. And that is, if someone succumbs to the virus, per chance that someone dies from the virus, generally the body is cremated. It is not buried. Right. So persons need to understand that that is also something that hopefully we never have to discuss, but it's just good to throw it out there and know that this is what will happen if someone, if someone. unfortunately comes on with the virus. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so the procedure, as you mentioned, would be a bit different, of course. But um, also, I remember you mentioning that influenza right. is uh, even more deadly. Yes. But because coronavirus is the trending topic right now, yeah. that's what people are focusing on. Yeah. But um, is it a case where people are understanding that, yeah, while the coronavirus is, yeah, the focus, are they understanding that there are other um, situations that they should be wary of as well? Yeah. When I started to speak about that context, um, some persons weren't happy with me making that statement at all because they just wanted in uh, Corona to be whatever the be the big bad how you call it a apocalypse or something like that yeah the zombie apocalypse, apocalypse. Zombie yeah. apocalypse yeah. <laughs> Um, and even back then, in my first appearance, uh -huh. I started saying, listen guys, we know Corona is new and because it is new, it is catching the world attention. But don't, let's put this thing in context. Yeah. The influenza is still around and much more persons are dying from the influenza than, than um, Corona. So, and that is still the, the concern that we must not um, we must not turn our eyes away from the, the more deadlier ones in Grenada, which is influenza, which H1N1 is in Trinidad. It's possible that it's here. Mm. Dengue fever is still around. Yeah. Um, and yellow fever is around the corner, lurking around the corner, because, you know, we need to look at these issues as well. So while I understand the emotional issues surrounding Corona, as a public health practitioner, as a public health expert, I have to take the bigger picture into consideration. Right. And we have much more of a risk here for H1N1, dengue and, you know, Zika and chikungunya and so on. Um, rather than the uh, corona at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, for the coronavirus again, uh, we know every time we listen to the news or we go mm -hmm. on the internet, you're seeing that the death toll is rising. Right. But is it a certain, what is people who are more exposed, whose um, immune system may have been compromised right. that are more susceptible to this? Excellent. Uh, and, and, and in addition to this point, we must understand that what is happening in China is groundbreaking. This is the first time that a new outbreak has happened and it's been contained so much in one location. Mm -hmm. In fact, the World Health Organization, Dr. Pedros, the Director General, indicated that what China has done has is a best practice for some countries and maybe some countries need to adapt what they've done to make sure they contain this. At the moment, 99% of the uh, infections are still in China and 99.9% .9 of the deaths are still in China. So something is happening out there, and I hope that it remains that way for the rest of the world, that we do not have as much um, infection as, um, as what's happening in, in, in China. So yes, I mean, th those, are, those are the considerations that we need to take, you mm -hmm. know, to look at. Right. So um, how do you feel right now? You're here talking to us. What, 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 what's your state of mind right now? What, what would you like to do now that this, this chapter of your life is over? This is something you'll always remember. I guess when you have your children, you could tell them you were the first quarantined person from China. So you kind of made your own little history there when you came from the zombie apocalypse, as you called it. How do you feel right now? What are some of the things you want to do immediately now that you have this sort of sense of freedom? Food. <laughs> Food again. <laughs> Yeah, while I was in quarantine, actually, I, I asked him to bring me hurricane ice cream. <laughs> hurricane ice cream? Yeah, that's my favorite. Oh, so. you love your belly, man. Yeah. <laughs> I like your spirit. <laughs> be honest, be honest. That's what I want. That's you what like I, food. <laughs> food is life, honestly. But um, another thing i like to touch on uh, is, is what you guys were talking about with uh, the breakouts in, in different um, viruses. Um, in China, from Wuhan as well, um, not only was the coronavirus uh, uh, new spreading, but um, the bird flu started out soon afterwards. Wow. So in the same location, you had something else popping out there. And um, I, I just like to get that out for everyone to know as well. Um, yes, China is trying really hard to get this under wraps, but it's not easy to do so, especially because new cases of difficult yeah. to deal with situations are popping up. Um, and although China is, is 
like even where it's originated is one of the world's most renowned research facilities. So um, if that's the case and it spread so much from there, you know, it, it just emphasizes how much we need to be cautious mm -hmm. about everything that we do, not only um, when we go out or when we go to special events or in gatherings and stuff like that, but in everyday life, just uh, interacting with other people. Um, people need to stop taking sanitary measures for granted. Yeah. Um, and um, keep this stuff in mind. Yeah. Um, something else that uh, is, is kind of on my head um, when it comes to the coronavirus itself, when it comes to it spreading and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like the way that it spreads, uh, if there is anyone infected on a plane, uh, my thoughts would be to quarantine the plane. <laughs> 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 because if that person breathes in the plane, could be half of the plane is already infected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a serious thing. Yeah, do you want to add something? Yes, he's correct. There are recommendations mm -hmm. for quarantine, mass quarantine, if there needs be. Once the case definition is made and the risk is assessed and, it's, and, it's, and, and, and the plane is assessed, um, there are recommendations given by CAFA, which we are going to follow, and we have something in place for that as well. Um, Leslie, I, also, I want to take the opportunity to make a special, to say special thank you to Wesley's family for cooperating with us in this matter. Yeah. I don't know, he probably has a very special uh, family because he was the first very cooperative. Um, his brothers and everybody else who've made our jobs nice and easy. We really do appreciate it very, very much. So special thank you to his family, especially his brother who is here with us. Well, he's not here right now, but yeah. I mean, in Grenada. In Grenada. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're running out of time. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up? Since you already have the mic, you can start. Yeah, I want to, I want to add, end by saying to persons, the best way to avoid coronavirus is to do the very simple, basic things that your grandmother and mother have already taught you. It's yeah. very simple. Just wash your hands. Keep yourself, take, pay attention to your hygienic needs. Yeah. It is so interesting that for most public health risks that we have out there, it has to do with cleanliness. It's interesting, basic, basic cleanliness, either cleanliness for yourself or cleanliness to your environment. Mm -hmm. Zika, chikungunya, dengue is cleanliness in your environment. Yep. The coronavirus, the flu, the influenza is cleanliness to yourself. Wash your hands often. Um, if you cough or you sneeze, do you know cough eti etiquette cough in your elbow, sneeze in your elbow. Um, well, you know, um, um, yeah, and so that's really the basic thing. Just mm -hmm. take care of yourself. And lastly, eat lots of bright colored foods because those are the foods that helps your immune system to function well. <laughs> <laughs> I brought oil up obviously. <laughs> Right, so the, the yellow, green, orange, red, those are the foods they should eat a lot of. You, I love look colorful too. It's not colorful foods, you know. It's colored. It's co co he just loves his stomach. <laughs> so that's what you do to keep your immune system up and running yeah. to prevent you from getting the coronavirus. Definitely. Wesley, any final? We got the point about food. Okay, okay. We know you love okay, food. Okay. Um, I just want to put out one concern that I've had since I've gotten back and uh, I've seen the difference happening here in the way mm. that uh, locals are treating the Chinese population that's here. Um, mm. And most of the Chinese people that are here have been here for a while. Um, yes, uh, there's a lot of people who are concerned about the issue that had happened with the plane that came in with uh, the Chinese individuals. but. Aside from that, there are many different Chinese people on this island right now, and they have been here for way longer than the coronavirus has even started. So I'd appreciate it if everyone treated them as just another part of our society instead yeah. of treating them like if they have a virus. All right, so thank you so very much, gentlemen. We've been speaking with Mr. Wesley McKee. He's to my immediate left, a student. He's been studying in China and, of course, talking to us about his experience while being in quarantine here. And, of course, to his immediate left, Dr. Francis Martin, the chief acting chief medical officer and i'm sure we got a lot of information out of this interview and as was mentioned let's just treat everybody with respect irrespective of what we may feel right now treat everybody with respect and of course just pay attention to our personal hygiene thank you so much for viewing i'm leslie ann johnson
Thank you.